Hi everyone, welcome to Bible 412, 1 Corinthians, one of our senior level Bible courses here at Point University. I'm so excited that you're taking this journey with us and it's going to be a very compelling journey. Our purpose is threefold during this class. First off, we want to walk into the city of ancient Corinth. You may know that you can go to the ruins there today and see the excavation that continues to be in progress. These are the same streets that Paul himself walked upon. These are the same buildings that he looked upon and entered. And we want to reconstruct life in this ancient city so that we can understand how this vibrant and troubled Christian community popped up there. We want to understand Paul's ongoing relationship with them that occurred over several years of time. We know, for example, that Paul spent several years there in Corinth building this church and then several years after corresponding with them and trying to keep them back on track. We want to walk into history, open our eyes, and imagine what that would have been like. We also want to understand Paul's theology in 1 Corinthians. You might say that Paul's theology of the cross is most pronounced in this letter. As he encounters these higher status Corinthians doing all of these higher status things, going to dining parties and idol temples and drinking great wine and getting drunk at the Lord's Supper, Paul responds over and over again with the cross that calls for downward mobility, not upward mobility. Paul calls himself a slave, although he is free and has seen Jesus. This is Paul's theological construct of downward mobility that occurs throughout. And thirdly, we always want to ask the question, so what? First Corinthians has so much to say about the liturgy and life of the local church today, about worship practices, about unity, about leadership. How can we take these ancient texts and apply them to the life of that we live as Christians today. It's going to be an exciting journey together. We do have two textbooks for the class. One is by Anthony Thistleton, which is a shorter version of his extended commentary that's about 1,100 pages, so this one's better for our format. And then the Ben Witherington textbook that covers both 1st and 2nd Corinthians. One thing I love about this class is you can choose which textbook that you want to read on any given week. If you want to jump between the two, you certainly can. And I would encourage you, get a taste for the writer, the scholar, that seems most palatable to you, most accessible to you, and go with that. Or if you get bored and want to switch mid-course, Go with that. Both of these textbooks are going to be very, very helpful, and they're both in, in paperback, so they're inexpensive. In terms of the assignments of the course, there are three major categories of assignments that I want you to be confident in. The first is discussion posts. Initial posts are due every Friday night by midnight, which gives us an opportunity to comment and interact with our peers on Saturday and Sunday. Your posts represent your attendance each week. And it's always important that your posts reflect the fact that you've done the particular reading that we are digesting it and engaging it. Secondly, there are two reflection papers that are due at differing points of the course. These reflection papers give you a lot of latitude. The purpose here is to pick, respectively, one chapter of 1 Corinthians, read one of the textbooks and what that textbook has to say about that chapter, and write a reflection on the chapter. So you're going a bit deeper than you normally would on a discussion post in those two reflection papers. And last, as a senior level course, there is a research paper for this class. However, as you'll notice, it is due in stages that allow the professor to coach you through the process. You'll turn in a topic proposal, you'll turn in your sources, you'll turn in your research, you'll turn in an outline, and then finally, at the end of the class, you will turn in the final paper. I trust that this will be an engaging experience for you, and I'm excited about beginning to study this vital and powerful letter of 1 Corinthians.